let me ask you, Seth, what, what's going on with, and I ask this question every week when we announce, you know, the shows on the network, what's going on with TNA? Is it, is it going out, out of business? <sighs> Unfortunately, I, and I've told Kev this, it's not. Unfortunately, um, they got it. They got a reprieve till January, as you know, and they have international deals. So, uh, yeah, they're probably going to stick around. Now, what were you thinking when you either heard or saw the James Storm sighting and wrestling match on NXT? I thought for good for him. <laughs> good for him. Get out of there. What's it like covering that show now? Is it like a, like a joke or like? It's It's been uh, the last few weeks have been interesting. They're doing this whole world title series thing where they just have a bunch of wrestling matches to determine because you might not know this Matt Hardy won the world title at Bound for Glory oh my god really yeah and then after that the day after that EC3 gets an injunction to keep him off the show because Matt Hardy's brother Jeff was the referee and he was a terrible ref so, let, wait. Now, is, and Matt Hardy then forfeited the title. What a cluster F. What about what about GFW? Is that this? Is that TNA? It's got to be right because they gave all the wrestlers to them. No, it's not TNA. They had a deal with uh, Jeff Jarrett to so he could sell his stocks to Dixie. They have to have a, a little bit of an alliance there, and gave GFW some time and superstars for a little bit. So Magnus and all those guys are still TNA property. Uh, no, Magnus is GFW guy. But it I, seems like all those guys went GFW at the same time. No, um, there are certain guys from TNA that are that appeared in GFW. Bobby Roode was in the finals of their tournament. Um, and EY, but most of them are still TNA guys. So who left for GFW? Um, Magnus. Um, and that's probably about it right now. Oh, that. Why did Magnus do that? Um, I think he was tired. He really they they screwed up his world title reign. So he's good. I like him. I know I, I did too. He's the first world champion in GFW, and with their English deals, that's a good deal. Wasn't Magnus the champion of Ring King as well? Oh yeah. So he's he's had a good little career. Yeah. Yes. That's crazy, man. Well, interesting stuff. What else, so what else is going on in the network that you want to tell us about while you're here? On the uh, – oh, in TNA? Um, yeah. Well, some of you might not know this, but uh, there, there, this whole ta- this whole World Series title series that they're doing with – it's basically a World Cup where they have like 32 wrestlers, including four knockouts in it. <laughs> what? Basically – do match play and uh there not only is there a knockouts division there is a division where we have se- there are several wrestlers who are no longer with the company that are in this tournament because of early tapings oh no yes james storm is in it <laughs> not only that kenny king is in it he is what are we doing? Having, are we having all the uh, TNA superstars um, do a tournament to see who actually gets a contract? See who gets the world title. That's what it is. They're, they're having tapings. <laughs> they're they're they had, tape, they had tapings. They, 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 they're having matches from tapings all the way in August. That's pathetic. They need to just shut down. <clears throat> uh, well, yeah, they have all. They had all these matches. So basically they have this whole turn they have like this whole tournament that may go through until the UK tour in February. You know what? Everybody just wants to watch kickboxer vengeance. <laughs> they're gonna get the TNA is going to get to the point where they're gonna have like half their staff stranded over in Europe. And the, whoever the champion is, is going to have to pawn off the championship belt to make it home. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the four knockouts in this tournament are Gail Kim, Awesome Kong, 
um, Brooke and Madison Rain for some reason. Uh, Brooke is hot. I would like to see Brooke versus, I don't know, EC3. But they're in a <laughs> knockouts division, so they got to face each other first. And the, I'd like to, top I'd two like to see. Advance. I'd like to see Brooke in a one-on-one over the top rope battle royal where the only way he could win against me is by submission. Oh no. <clears throat> is there any way that a, a female could wrestle a male in this scenario? Yes. It, they're desperate. Yes. Tina is desperate. Yes. Yes, there is. The top two, you got to remember, there's only one knockouts division and the top two make it to the knockout round. So at least two women are going to wrestle a male. That's ridiculous. So are there any like larger men in the in the like is Abyss or somebody like that in it? Yes, Abyss is in it. He's in the TNA Originals okay. group with uh, Storm. So so tell me, wh- wh- like, wh- how do you book your way out of Abyss versus Brooke Tasmacher? Um, I don't know if you they they may face somebody else. You don't know if who they may face. They may face Shira because he's in the dang tournament. You might remember him from Rinka King. Awesome Kong will beat half the men. <laughs> yeah. And then there's this whole Genesis thing that's supposed to come up eventually, which the card for that is one of the worst cards I have ever seen. These tournaments are so stupid. They just need to stop all this nonsense. <laughs> you ever seen the World Cup? That's what basically this tournament is, where there's like eight divisions of four wrestlers each division, and the top two in each division win. There's like group champions – Group uh, knockouts, group X division, group tag team specialists, group wild card, group TNA originals, and group future four. Sounds like fun. <laughs> no, it sounds, it sounds horrible. It sounds like if I didn't know it's possible, to, but TNA's ratings are going to go down substantially from where they are right now. <laughs> oh, and by the they, way, they could end up negative. You remember Austin Aries when he he lost a uh, loser leaves town match he's against Sir Spud? Yeah, he's awesome. in a tournament. <laughs> Pathetic. And they and they basically said he's Austin Aries. That's how he's back in the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> and they they called internet nerds at the, like for asking why he's back in, and they're like. Well, he's Austin Aries. He there, there's this group called Group Champions. He had to be in this somehow. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Well, I will say this, Seth. Thank you for coming on the air and telling us about Ruru and sharing us the latest on TNA tonight. Yeah, it's been I'll a downhill you, spread. The first show, show of this world title series was actually good, and it's been downhill ever since. It's been, it's been, do- been down downhill since the moment they started broadcasting this garbage. But, and, uh, including last week's show, me and Kev talked about this. For 90 minutes, there wasn't a good match, and this show felt like three hours. Dude, I know you're going to kill me for saying this, and you know that I believe that. The best point ever, TNA, and I know you're going to kill me, aces and eights, man. That was the best and most interesting TNA has ever been. No, I'm going to disagree with you on that. You do or don't? I'm going to disagree with you on that. I think the best point was actually in 2004. Can I? Can I? Let me ask you this though. And, and I, we 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 do have to get off the air, but you didn't like the like. Remember when Aces Ace first came in? They had the masks on, and yeah, there was like eight of them. Eight, then there was about ten of them, and yeah. they were they they were kicking the shit out of everybody. Yeah, and no one knew who they were. And we weren't getting much. Yeah. And then they had that one night where there was like a 20 minute brawl <laughs> between the 10 masked guys and like, like maybe like 10 or 15 of the top TNA guys. You didn't yeah. like that just fight with no boundaries or limits. Um, basically that was a situation where the TNA guys look, got look, made to look like jumps. And then there was a moment where freaking old ass Hogan. And Sting with the bat beat up like ten guys on the aces and eights. <laughs> it was, I don't know. It was stupid. 
you know, I just like I like the idea of like we're in the same federation and we're fighting like just for our own survival. Like it's like we're gonna put our like I like I love that component of the invasion, and I always like that component of like well, this is our our federation, like what we are, and oh, you're coming you in to take us up. Clay? What's that? You remember Brodus Clay or Tyrus as he's called in TNA? Yeah. He's the number one contender for the world title after this whole world title series is done. The fact that Derek Bateman and the, the Funkasaurus are your best wrestlers, that's not good. That's not a good sign. Uh, actually, Tyrus is one of the worst wrestlers there. <laughs> Why is he in the money? Why? Because I don't know. He's a former WWE guy, I guess. You know, just to bring that around for just a second, if, if you like the idea uh, of everybody just kind of being in this for the, for themselves, then you really have to to recognize what I believe was the pinnacle of of TNA, which was the main event mafia storyline. Uh, I hated that. It's not because the main event mafia got over huge. That that, that wasn't fine. They did. But the the guys they put in the front line because they really got screwed because they were going to position Christian to be the head of the uh, front line. Yeah, and Christian left for ECW. I mean, I mean, it, I mean they they had their they had their issues and they had their dynamics. But really, when you when you step back and you look at that though, this was a great story of what happens when you had the the essentially the TNA originals butting up against guys that had come into the promotion who had made it big elsewhere and were now looking to to make their own place here there was this conflict where everybody really felt that the other side had to prove themselves right here and eventually what we ended up with through various screw jobs of, of one extreme or the another and, you know, one side getting a victory and the other side getting a victory and defections left or right is eventually everybody came to a mutual respect for each other. And I thought we got some of the best story writing in one spot. Uh, we may have. We also got Mick Foley as world champion. Wait, what was what was their end game again? Like, what was the main event mafia trying to do? Like, what was their the ultimate main event goal? Mafia was basically a group of main eventers. No, I know they were. It was, it was Booker T, Nash, Steiner, Angle, and Sting. But what was their end goal? They, they basically didn't like the young guys. They 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 felt that the young guys had not quite paid their dues. They hadn't quite earned the same level of respect as them, and so therefore, why do these guys deserve to? you know, have top place on the card. Why do they deserve to be wrestling for titles? You know, they've not proven themselves yet. And the yo the younger TNA guys on the other end are like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? We've been with this company since day one. We built this from the ground. We made it what it was. And now you're coming out on tail end. You've not yet proven yourself here. You may have proven yourself story. elsewhere, but you haven't done it here. On paper, app, this absolutely would have been a great idea. But you got to remember who was booking at the time. And that was Vince Russo. It Vinny was, Rowe. and it, it, it was, and I, and I thought that it, it really was legitimately some of Vince Russo's finest work. I, well, I, I, I'm going to disagree on some things, but they, they basically made them look bad to have the worst ratings and basically have to bend over knee to bring in Hogan after the main event mafia was done. It basically buried all the young guys and forced them to bend over knee to get Hogan. I kind of like disagree with one thing though. I thought the Aces and Eights was better. Well, no, I, I mean, I only saw a little bit of the main event on off your piece, but I would think the Aces and Eights were better because I, 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 as I understood it, the Aces and Eights goal was to literally end the Federation. In some ways, and then it became Bully Ray about right. Bully Ray. Um, in some the ways, yeah, was but... great with alcohol and, and women. Oh, yeah. It's, it's It was basically a Sons of Anarchy ripoff. <laughs> With the same song. Well, basically, it so it wasn't the same song, but it sounded like the same song. <laughs> it was so funny. What, what, yeah. like, is that because of Bischoff's biker obsession? Is that what this is all about? 
it was Bischoff's biker obsession, and there were a few other people in the in the group who actually liked Sons of Anarchy. And Sons of Anarchy was a hit show, so they tried to. Pick That's it. pathetic. That it, see, here's the thing. So I never watched Sons of Anarchy. So me, I'm watching like the watered down wrestling version. I'm like, this is pretty cool. But if I actually saw Sons of Anarchy, which I, I did, <laughs> no, but but you can see how I got duped. They were hoping that none of the wrestling fans actually saw Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, they were. They so were. And with all this stuff like uh, Doc, who's now in, by the way, Doc or Luke Gallows is now in New Japan as one of their tag team champions with uh, Machine Gun Anderson. As part of the Bullet Club. Yep. Well, I, I liked how they had all the different ranks. Like oh yeah, oh yeah. that's part of that's Sons of Anarchy ripoff too the ranks and why was D'Lo wrestling <laughs> why was D'Lo wrestling I have no fucking clue why was D'Lo doing anything D'Lo was at one point uh, one of the guys backstage for TNA but they let that they let they that side to put him in the ring that Briscoe kid beat Angle in a steel cage match <sighs> and he sucked. His really most did. and his most infamous moment would be calling Hulk Hogan Hawk Hogan. He called him Hawk Hogan. Yes, that's all. So how did he call him Hawk? He called him Hawk because of his because of his it's his you know his uh twang or whatever his accent said Hawk Hogan. Now now I could ex- I could accept him as leader of a biker game with a nickname like Hawk. <laughs> Oh, Hogan wasn't leader of the biker gang. He was I, fighting the biker gang. I know, I know, I know. But I mean, if if you if you think about it for just a moment, did he get heat for Hulk Hogan? <laughs> no, it basically was skipped over because of how bad it was. They tried to be like, let's forget he ever said that. Hulk Hogan, that's awesome. Yeah, that's all. Aw- oh man, I love that. Anyway. Good stuff, guys. This is good. I'm glad you came on tonight. No problem. Good to, good to hear from you, man. Big news tonight with Ruru. But, um, Kev, I, I th- think we definitely went over. But is there anything you want to add about the um, the schedule? Go for it, buddy. No, I don't have anything to add for the schedule tonight because I don't have any of the schedule for the rest of the week. Nobody's told me anything yet. So you're just going to have to listen to AngryMarks.com for everything over there. You're going to have to skip over to VOCNation.com for everything on that side as well. So you don't know who is on Undisputed Show? I am in the dark on everything at this second. Well, I I was in the dark on everything. (laughs) Oh, I, I can let you guys know. So... Um, we have two guests on Tuesday night, which is, um, which is the Undisputed Wrestling Show with Zane Paisley and, and, the, and the Prophet and some other guy that's an indie wrestler. Uh, we are interviewing two people. At hour one, we're interviewing Hawk Hogan, uh, <laughs> of wrestling fame. And then in hour two, we are interviewing our good friend and, um, New England Wrestling Federation announcer, the great Mike Pollan, and that is our our lineup. Oh wait, you didn't have Jeff Harvey? <laughs> Who's Jeff Harvey? <laughs> you ever Mike Adam Lee at a Royal Rumble called Jeff Hardy Jeff Harvey? That's awesome. Yes, you missed that, dude. Adam Lee was great, but you see, I actually thought adam lee was just a work like i didn't believe any of it i was like this guy's awesome this is a great work no sadly it was legit he just he he was so he 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 was brought in he had no idea about pro wrestling he he was out of his league yeah will he ever come back no he probably won't Although he's, he said, he said never, never say never. He said that door, that door is still standing open for him if he wants to walk through it. I don't know if he does because he was made fun of. He, his life was made such a hell by people. He's better than what's his face, Tanae. Tanae, I don't know how Tanae made all that money over all those years. Tanae is a joke. Tanae is in, uh, is now no longer on the announcing team. 
He shouldn't have made a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. Tanae and Taz are no longer the commentators for Raw. Taz sucks too. Dude, I'm going to tell you, you know why I watch TNA and I'm not making a joke, dude? You guys know I love them. Don West was awesome, man. Don yeah. West was great. Do you know who the announcing team is? Who? Josh Matthews and the Pope D'Angelo De Niro or Elijah I, Burke, if you may know him as. I would think Pope's awesome on the mic. Well, he can be a little he can be a little mistaking, mistake oriented. Um, he would he calls suplexes souffles. Oh man! Oh, <laughs> or he, man. <laughs> yes, he, you know the old souffle. Sometimes uh, Gordon Soley would call it that because if I was, I'll tell you, if I was WWE though, the first thing I would do is get Byron Saxton out of there. And I would put Corey Graves in. Corey Graves is really good. It was very surprising. I didn't expect anything out of him. He's really good. You know, I'm just the opposite. I like I like Byron Saxon a little better than Corey Graves. I but hate if Saxon. You, but if you get rid of Jerry Lawler, put both of them in. There you go. Saxton was really good at Beast from the East. By the way, you heard what happened to Jerry Lawler, right? Car accident. Yeah. He's fine, though. He's fine. I, 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 heard, I heard his girlfriend's airbag saved him. Dude, Jerry, Jerry Lawler's been snake bit in the last couple of years. You know? Oh, he absolutely has. Between his son, him, this car. I mean, man, that guy is just, he's had some bad luck. Uh, yeah, his, uh, son was the one who confirmed they were both okay. Well, that's good. Well, I'm glad he's all right. Yeah. But, um, Good stuff. All right, guys. Well, um, uh, you know, Seth Drake and always a pleasure. You know, um, I'll definitely listen Thursday nights when I can. Um, Big Dick, it's always a pleasure. Well, You're- it may not be on Thursday nights. We don't know when it gets uh, taped. It- Still, I don't think the latest episode of our Impact Implosion has ever even been uh, aired yet. Well, when Hawk Hogan comes on next, we'll air it. <laughs> yeah, oh. that was one of the funniest moments. <laughs> <laughs> was I just looked it up on YouTube. I can't find Hulk Hogan. Well, go West Briscoe, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Thank you. Um, you might and, find it there or on one of the Botchamanias, the earlier ones. He does that where he goes, and Hulk Hogan. <laughs> and he's like, puts a picture of Hulk from the Road Warriors. That's terrible. Yeah. Anyway. We'll see you guys soon. Um, thanks everybody for joining and, um, we'll, um, we'll see you next week. Kev hit the music. <laughs>